And we are following more breaking news out of the NBA where the league office has announced they will be opening an investigation into allegations of racism and misogyny leveled against Phoenix Suns and Mer Mercury owner Robert Sarver. Here is a statement from the league office. It says the allegations contained in today's ESPN article are extremely serious and we have directed the Wachtell Lipton law firm to commence a comprehensive investigation. The NBA and WNBA remain committed to providing a respectful and inclusive workplace for all employees. Once the investigation is completed, its findings will be will provide the basis for any league action. Now, Sarver released his own statement earlier today. He says, I continued to be shocked by the false reporting from Baxter Holmes, who is the reporter for ESPN. While there is so much that is inaccurate and misleading in this story that I hardly know where to begin, let me be clear, the N-word is not part of my vocabulary. He goes on to say, I've never called anyone or any group of people the N-word or referred to anyone or any group of people by that word. It is abhorrent, ugly, degenerating, and against everything that I believe in. At this point, I would entirely welcome an impartial NBA investigation, which may prove our only outlet for clearing my name and the reputation of an organization of which I am so very proud. Let's welcome in the host of Nothing Personal, David Sampson. David, very serious allegations here against Robert Sarver. We can tell you now, of course, that the NBA will be launching its own investigation into this. Where do we begin to unpack this and what it means for this organization? Well, let's start at the beginning. We knew this a couple of weeks ago because rumors got out that ESPN was working on what Robert Sarver referred to as a piece of fiction describing what he was like as an owner and what he's been like for well over a decade. I have never seen in my career an owner make a preemptive statement, which is was talking about an article that had not even come out yet. Well, today was the day that the article came out and contained in the article was an extensive accounting off the record sources, some with names attached, describing the atmosphere in the Phoenix Suns workplace describing what it was like to be a woman working with the Phoenix Suns, describing what it was like to be a black person working with the Phoenix Suns, describing in general the atmosphere where people were scared. These are big words now that we're using because these are legal words that people were scared, that they were being attacked, and that they were uncomfortable in their workplace. Now, this has come up before. We've had this with the Dallas Mavericks. We've had this with the Washington football team. And commissioners and other owners have to stop it now. Therefore, what all the leagues do is they say they're going to investigate the misconduct. Think about the growth that we've seen, Amanda. With the Washington football team, it was okay for the owner himself to start the investigation. And then in the middle, Roger Goodell said, no, no, we'll take it from here. Now we've progressed in the NBA where they're not going to let the Phoenix Suns do an internal investigation. The NBA has hired a very well-known law firm, Wachtell Lipton. They will conduct an extensive investigation. They say it will be independent. We'll have to wait to see. And the result of that investigation will inform us what will happen to Robert Sarver. Is it possible that the NBA will force him to sell his team? That is what everybody is asking. To force an owner to sell, that has not happened in basketball since Donald Sterling. Remember, though, Donald Sterling made his racist comments. They were on tape. There was no denying it. There was no running from it. Granted, it was taped in his home by his either girlfriend or wife at the time. But in the Sarver case, we have a lot of hearsay. We have a lot of he said, she said, they said. And so the NBA, through its independent investigation, will have to get to the bottom of this because everybody's watching. That's the difference between 2021 and the baseball days of Marge Schott or the basketball days of Donald Sterling, which is not too long ago, but it's a different world now, Amanda. So the league is going to have to take its time. Some of the allegations contained in the article, in my opinion, do not rise to the level of forcing Robert Sarver to sell the team. They would force me to make him not in charge anymore, and that's a very different level. To say you can't run your team like Daniel Snyder had to give the Washington football team to his wife, Tanya, or to say you must sell your team, two very different things. So the NBA first has to figure out what's real, 
Then they have to figure out what the punishment will be, and it's not going to happen overnight. And then the NBA has to try to get past this level of distraction and go to every other team in the league and make sure that this is not happening. You said the NBA is going to take its time on this. That article uh, attributed more than 70 current and former employees. I mean, how quickly will the NBA feel that it has to move while doing a thorough investigation at the same time? Yeah, you cannot force an owner to sell the team unless you do a very thorough investigation. And that number 70 is an important number. Think about this, Amanda. If there are 70 people that Baxter Holmes is citing, the NBA has to speak to every single one of them. They And it's Wachtell Lipton, by the way. We keep saying the NBA. It's the law firm Wachtell Lipton. There's going to be plenty of legal fees that are going to be paid for by all owners. So they're going to want this investigation to happen as quickly and as inexpensively as possible. But the reality is it's going to have to go deep. But Robert Sarver has been in the league since 2004. So he's had 17 years where there have been tons of employees back and forth. He's fired a lot of coaches, had a lot of assistant coaches, a lot of people in the front office. So there is a lot of layers to this. And they can't just talk to people who are recently with the Suns, who are currently with the Suns. Because Amanda, look at what James Jones said. The current GM of the team went public even before the article came out and said, this is not the Robert Sarver I know. He's not a racist. He's not a misogynist. So what Sarver's doing is having current employees who are very front-facing in public backing him. Other employees who are no longer with the team, former coaches like Watson, who may have an ax to grind, that's what Sarver's gonna contend, they're saying that the atmosphere and the workplace was not tenable. So the NBA has to juggle all of these things before a decision can be rendered. What happens to Robert Sarver in the meantime? What does he do? If I'm the commissioner, I absolutely am calling Robert Sarver and I am telling him to step back from the operation of the team. I am telling him to stay away from the arena because I don't want to sully my product by having him around. I don't want the distraction of having him around. I'm not making him sell or divest right now, but I'm asking him to not be in the offices. I'm asking him to not be involved in any running of the team. Then, as commissioner, I am going to Phoenix and meeting with that entire front office, the commissioner, and I am telling everyone there that we hear you, we understand, and we are going to not just investigate, but we're going to make things better. Even if you think they're good, James Jones, we're gonna make it better. If you think it's been unacceptable, we are gonna make sure that there are systems in place so that you feel safe and that you feel you can be heard. And we're gonna take the time to hear from everyone. Again, Amanda, that's why this doesn't get taken care of overnight. David Sampson, we appreciate your insight into that. Uh, of course, you can hear more from David Sampson on his podcast, Nothing Personal with David Sampson. David, thank you. So here is the Suns' upcoming schedule. As you can see, they do have a game tonight, uh, 10 Eastern, as of right now, against the Rockets. It's a very busy schedule as we are in the heart of the NBA season right now. Saturday against the Hawks, Monday at the Kings. Of course, we'll keep you posted on this story as it continues to unfold. Let's welcome in former coach and NBA champ Avery Johnson to talk about this. Obviously, it is a very sensitive issue, Avery, uh, and everyone will treat it as such, but just your reaction to what's unfolded in the past couple of hours. Wow, where do you start? Um, you know, this story, when you read it from start to finish, there, there's a lot of damning uh, information in it uh, and allegations, and, and they're all allegations in, towards uh, Robert Sarver, the son's owner. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to the NBA uh, investigating uh, these allegations and, and, and launching an investigation because... It, it's not good for anybody. It's not good for the NBA brand, the fans. It's not good for a workplace environment. Uh, we don't, in the NBA, I, I spent 16 years as a player and obviously close to 10 years as a coach. We don't need any of our NBA franchises with toxic work environments where folks don't really feel comfortable and where they're uh, 
uh, disrespected. So uh, I, I'm looking forward to this investigation and um, and seeing the results of it by, by Adam Silver in the NBA. Avery, if you're a coach, I mean, the, the Suns, they play tonight. They're going to try to keep moving forward with this hanging over them. I mean, how do you handle that as a coach and a player right now? Well, I, you know, I, I know Mighty Williams and, and James Jones. And, you know, those guys are coming off an incredible season uh, for the Feeding Suns and did so much for that community. You know, I, I covered uh, um, the NBA Finals last year for CBS Sports HQ in Phoenix, on the ground, and felt the energy and the excitement and, and what the Suns did for all of those businesses, especially coming out of COVID. So I, I think, um, you know, when you look at what this franchise means to that city and to have this now as, as a black eye, um, I, I think people want to figure out how to get uh, the, to the bottom of it, and they're going to want closure on this and we'll figure out what the NBA is going to do after they finalize and finish their investigation. Avery, we appreciate you talking to us about this. Again, a very sensitive situation, but as you said, you are looking forward to the investigation being done. We talked to David Samson, who said it will probably take some time. Avery, thank you. Thank you. And you heard Avery talk about just how much this Suns team means to that city, to that state. They're taking a look at their upcoming schedule. They do play tonight, 10 Eastern against the Rockets. After that, Saturday against the Hawks, Monday at the Kings. But again, uh, the NBA saying they will be launching an investigation into Robert Sarver and those allegations now made against him. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.